country. It's so beautiful. It's so different from... Yes, it is. Well, so it was just a vacation trip. Well, it is for you. New country to see and it's enjoy. It's not for you. Oh, it's not that bad. Just one more job one and... One more we'll... job. One more man to send to prison. No, back to prison. Billy Miller escaped, okay, remember? Okay, come on. Come on, honey, the stage is ready to go. Good looking at that watch. It's not gonna make the stage come in on time. Joe, Candy. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Hi, right, Rick. Mr. Cartwright, I. No, listen, did you get that horse shot? No, not yet. That mare throws his front foot out a little bit. I was gonna build a special shoe and wait at some on the inside to see if I couldn't correct it. Yeah, it might be a good idea. I hear tell there's a marshal on his way into town. Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Old friend of mine, Luke Mansfield. Oh, he, he's just coming here for a vacation, Rick. I don't think it has anything to do with you. Luke? <laughs> How are you? Well, finally, after 15 years. Luke, my son Joseph. Joe, of course. How are you? And uh, this is uh, Candy, uh, one of my uh, hands. Candy, how are you? <laughs> Clumsy me. Thank you. That'll be all, boy. She can stand up without your help. Father, if he hadn't caught me, I'd be flat in the dust. He was trying to help. I know what he was trying to do. Marshal, I, I was hoping that... Ben, I brought along a surprise for you. I want you to meet my little girl, Laurie. Father, how many times do I have to tell you I'm not a little girl? Indeed, she's not a little girl. She's a beautiful young lady. Laurie, how nice to see you. Hello. My son, Joseph. Pleasure, man. How do you do? And this is Candy. Ma'am. Now, you boys get the luggage down and the uh, series right over here. Follow me. Thank you very much. Come on, dear. Look, I was hoping you could make this a real vacation. You know, take it easy, enjoy yourself. Well, as a matter of fact, I handed in my resignation a month ago. Now that Gloria's finished school, I thought I'd settle down and make a home for her. Well, and this one piece of unfinished business got in the way. Unfinished business? A man I put in prison a long time ago broke out 10, 12 months ago. We all thought that he went to Mexico. Only last week we heard that he headed this way. Well, since you're no longer marshal, why are you tracking him down? It's a special case, Ben. I'm still carrying one of his bullets in my leg. Father. It's so beautiful here. Can't we just forget about that old Billy Miller? For today, at least. Oh, all right. I'm all unpacked. You should see the view from upstairs. There's the cutest little burrow in the corral. <laughs> yeah, he's a cute little one. Total stranger wandered in one day. We're waiting for his owner to come along and pick him up. <laughs> hey, you know something? There's nothing he'd like better than to be fed a big, juicy apple by a pretty little gal. Come on. Can I can feed it? Sure. Oh, she's a sweet child. Busy as a whirlwind and iron-headed sometimes, but she's a sweet child. Sweet she is, but a child she isn't. Oh, yes, she is, in more ways than one. All those years at school, she's got a lot of growing up to do. Well, all children do, Luke. But uh, tell me about this uh, Billy Miller. 
Very dangerous man. Guilty of murder twice over. But all we could prove in court was mail robbery. Ben, in my bag upstairs, I've got a thousand dollars. I'm offering it as a reward for him, dead or alive. Luke, uh, you're a pretty good marshal, so you're going to find out about this sooner or later anyway. Might as well tell you. There's a young fellow in town. Been here about, oh, 10 or 12 months, working at the blacksmith shop. And he never made a secret of the fact that he served time in prison. But we all like him a great deal. Well, that's your privilege. But it's probably a mistake. Well, be that as it may, the reason I'm telling you this is it uh, can't be the same fellow you're looking for, because this one is a, a young'un. But his name is Miller, too. Not Billy Miller, Rick Miller. Could be a relative. When a man's on the run, he always goes somewhere to find somebody for help. Family, maybe. Well, I didn't want to intimate that there was any relationship between Then I think I'd better ride into town and have a talk with this young fellow. You said it was at the blacksmith shop, huh? Well, yeah, he's at the blacksmith shop. Then I need a horse. Would you just... Yeah, sure, of course. Yes. And then I got a change, I think. Like I was saying, there's a dance Saturday night. I thought it would be kind of a good idea if you were hey, to wait. Hey, wait a minute, you two. I was the one that brought it up first. And the way I figured, I got first digs. Joe? What do you mean you get first digs? It was Candy and I that met her at the stage. I think if anybody gets first digs... Uh, Joe? Uh, Joe, your, uh, your pa is calling. Oh. Yeah, but you think about what I said, huh? See you later. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Hoss, he's, um, he's about half right. Uh, it was me and Joe that uh, picked her up at the stage. Oh, well, gentlemen, I'm sure there'll be enough dances for everyone. Now, I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I've never been to a real dance. Oh, yeah? I, I, I've learned how. I learned how in school, but it was always just with the girls. Well, I'll tell you, Lori, this one Saturday night will be somewhat different. <laughs> well, I guess I must have made a mistake. I mentioned Rick Miller. And he immediately assumed that he was related to this fellow that he's tracking. And, boy, he's sure rough on anybody who's ever served time in prison. Well, maybe he's been a lawman too long. <sighs> maybe, but anyway, I'd like you to ride in with Luke, just so Rick knows he still has some friends. Saddle two horse. The biggest problem I have is not breaking a little gal's feet when I step on them. <laughs> you bet. Hey, where are you going, Joe? I gotta go to town. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, take your time. Don't hurry back. So, Lori, what did you do before you came out here? Oh, nothing really, just school. Uh, more oh, competition. Hi, yeah, Rick. Hello, Rick. Hey, Rick. You could have saved yourself a trip out here, old buddy. I was going to come get that horse tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Candy, but I wanted to come out anyhow. Uh, yeah, I'll bet you did. Hi. I didn't have a chance to thank you properly this morning. Are you Rick? Yes. Hi, I'm Lori Mansfield. Rick Miller. The, re the reason I came out, Miss Lori, is I, I I'd like to speak to your father. Of course, he's in the house. Come with me. Father, we're just coming in to see you. This is Rick Miller. He wants to talk to you. Well, that saves me a ride into town. I'd be pleasant, please. Go in the house, Laurie. Can't you be pleasant for a minute? He only wants to talk to you. Do as I say. Go in the house. Hope we'll meet again, Rick. Rick Miller. Where'd you do time, boy? Down in Yuma? With your Uncle Billy, or, or is he your cousin? Did you two work it out together before they let you go, boy? No, sir. Did you tell him you had a place ready and waiting for him when he broke out? No, sir, it wasn't like that at all. I want the truth, boy. You remember what it's like down there in Yuma Prison. I can put you right back there. Just like that. Father! Marshal, I came out here to tell you about Billy. He came all the way out here and you treat him like an animal. What kind of a man are you? You ask me that, ask him. 
Look at him, sick with fear. It's written all over him. It's the mark of a jailbird. I wouldn't lay a hand on him. Anyway, I told you to go in the house. I know what you told me. Staying right here. Pull yourself together, boy. Nobody's going to touch you. You said you came out here to tell me something. All right, let's hear it. Marshal, I was up in Fernley when Billy broke out. I didn't know nothing about it till he got here. He was all shot up. Been riding for a long time, didn't have no care of medicine. I hit him in a shack up by where I was working. I reckon I shouldn't have done it, Mr. Cartwright, but he was my blood kin, my cousin. There weren't even time to get a doctor. He just kept getting sicker and sicker. He died in a couple hours. I buried him up there, Marshal. Well, now, isn't that convenient? You came all the way out here just to tell me. Father, stop it. Please. Billy had a good reason to want my hide. It's a trap, isn't it, boy? You want to sucker me out there with some tall tale just so Billy could have target practice? No, sir. One sure way to find out, Luke. Whereabouts in Fernley? About three miles northeast of the old Silver Dollar Mine. Yeah, it's a long ride. You'll need company. Candy, Joe, you go along with Luke. And you'll need uh, supplies and bedrolls. Right. We'll get the supplies in town. This is official business. The government will pay for all we need. But there's a trap. We don't want him at our backs. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see that he stays here. When you find that grave, Father, remember to be ashamed. Laurie. You don't understand, dear. When I get back, we'll have a nice long talk. A nice long lecture, you mean? Really? Well, this time I'm not going to listen. Not unless you apologize first. Should be all right, Luke. I think so, Ben. Anybody else's hands? I'd wonder. Maybe later on, you and I can take a little ride around the ranch. Would you like that? See you later. What did you do to Rick last night? Tie him up and lock him in the barn? <laughs> no. What gave you that idea? He's in the tack room. <laughs> you said he'd... Stay until your father came back. There's no reason to tie him up. Or what are you talking about? <laughs> you went off to do some work. You believed him. Now, why, why couldn't father? Well, we know him. Your father doesn't. We've known him for close to a year. Like him. Can't say I agree with everything he does, like taking in an escaped convict. I don't think that was right, although I can understand it. He was cruel. You're not. No, Laurie. He's not cruel. Being a lawman in wilderness territory is pretty rough going. You can't just take every stranger at face value. It might cost you your life. Your father helped make this country a, a fit place to live, and he did it mostly on his own. No one else to depend upon but himself. That still is no reason for him to treat Rick like an outlaw and a liar. He has no right to play God. That's what he does always with me. I think I was still five years old or something. All right, pass me that plate, would you please? You know, you can't blame a father for wanting his little girl to remain a little girl. 
Anyway, he hasn't had much chance to see you grow up. You know that, don't you? That was his own fault. Ever since I was little, he's kept me in boarding schools. He's never cared about me, Uncle Ben. If I as much as got a note from him on my birthday, it was heaven. Laura, you've got to believe this. Your father loves you very much. When your mother died, he couldn't keep you with him. It was impossible the way he was moving around all the time because of his work. You should have heard him yesterday. How happy he was talking about the home he was going to make for you and him. Is that for Rick? Yes, he said he wasn't hungry before. I thought I'd take it out. May I bring it to him? You said you trusted him. Of course. I wish he were like you, father and me. I can talk to you. There's never been anyone to talk to. I suppose no matter where you are, if you're lonely or miserable, whether you're in prison or... <laughs> a fancy Eastern school. Talk about it so easily. I think you'd want to forget about it. Lie about it, even. In time, you mean? It wouldn't get me no place. Somebody somewhere would turn up who knew me, and I'd have to start all over again. I reckon it's best to face up to it right from the start. But it's so unfair. It's not what you've been that should count, it's what you are. Well, if I hadn't been caught robbing that cash box, I suppose I would have probably figured it was unfair that all I had to show for my trouble was $17. $17? 76 cents. They put you in prison for stealing $17? They put me in prison for stealing, Miss Laurie. Didn't matter how much. The way my father treated you yesterday. It's all right, Miss Laurie. It doesn't matter. Right? Will you take me to the dance Saturday night? What? I know it isn't proper for the girl to ask, but I really would be proud if you'd be my escort to the dance on Saturday night. Oh, no, Miss Laurie. I'd be the proud one. You stop calling me Miss all the time. I'm honored, Lori. I didn't get here quite quick enough this time.
Hey, Lori, how about that ride after lunch? I'd love it. I guess I'd better get back to work. See you then. After lunch, horse, now. Paul, I've been out digging post holes all morning. I'm as empty as a rain barrel in a uh, <clears throat> Well, Hop Singh has uh, got the picnic basket prepared. You two could leave right now. How oh, about it? I have to change first. Well, go ahead, Scoot. She and Rick have been together since breakfast. And it's perfectly all right, but you know, Loki wouldn't care for it, so make it a long ride. Huh? Well, sort of figuring on a nap. Horse, what's the matter with you? You got a whole afternoon ahead of you, the beautiful young girl? Yeah, that's just a problem. Don't you think she's a little too young? Oh, don't let her hear you say that. No. I'll go get the buggy. Cake and stuff over here. Thank you, I couldn't. Uh oh. Sorry, Mr. Ant, but you're a little late for the picnic. That's funny. <laughs> Seems no matter where you stop to eat, they always show up. Oh, sure they do. They got a system, you know. Yeah. A little guy sits on a little mound, and when he sees a horseman ride by with a picnic basket or a buggy go by with a picnic basket, he sends a signal to another little guy on another little mound who in turn sends it to another little guy on another little mound and so on. You're fooling. What? No. Oh, how else would they know where to go? He must think I'm still coloring picture books. No. No, I don't, Lori. You're... You're almost a grown lady. As a matter of fact, it won't be long till you'll be a grandmother with a shawl around your shoulders and rocking in front of a fireplace. Well, I told you, I like him. We all do. Even though he's a jailbird? Well, that sets him apart a little. The way I figured, he made a mistake and paid for it. He's never lied about his background. He came into town, got a job at the blacksmith shop doing odd chores, and now he's probably one of the best blacksmiths I know. When do people stop remembering? I don't know, Lori. That's, that's hard to say. Well, look, if we're going to see Beaver Tail Falls, we better be on our way, huh? Uncle Ben sent us on this picnic so I couldn't talk to Rick. That's true, isn't it? Sort of. Yes, I think we'd better be getting back now. He said he'd be in in a minute. Oh, good. Did you enjoy it? Yes. It's yes. lovely. Well, we're going to have supper in a little while. If you want to freshen up. I'm going to take something out to Rick first. I already have. Uncle Ben, there's something I want to ask you. Yeah. It's about Saturday night, the dance. I want to go, but I know my father wouldn't approve. Uh, Lori, uh, you, you're making your father out to be an ogre. Uh, we're all going to go. No reason why he'd disapprove. I want to go with Rick. Um, 
Did he ask you? We want to go together. I know if you talked to my father, he'd say yes. Well, I don't know if your father's going to be back in time before the dance. Huh? Well, if he is back in time, will you talk to him? Well, if not, you could give me permission. I'll tell you, Laurie, I, you know, it's, it's not what I think you want. You, your father left you in my charge, and... Well, knowing what he thinks about people who've been in prison... You like I, Rick. Yes, of course I like Rick, but this is different. You no, know, it just... isn't. It isn't. What's the matter with all you old people anyway? You say one thing and you do another. I thought you were different, but you aren't. You're just the same. Well, Laura, you, you, don't, you don't seem to understand. I do, too. I'm not too young. You're all too old, that's all. All you think about is the past. You've forgotten what it's like to have a future. What it's like to be alive, even. Oh, I hope I never get to be like you. What's that book you're reading? History of Brands. I found it terribly interesting last night, but for some reason or other, I just can't keep my mind on it tonight. Yeah. Same with me. Adding up that column of figures. Four tries, four different answers. She sure was upset. Yeah. I didn't hear much of it, but... Just from the little I did hear, she was at. Trouble is, she may be right. I tell you, getting old means getting over cautious, over careful. It's no wonder the young folks won't talk to you. Can't trust your judgment. Paul. Oh. Of course, the root of the trouble here is that she doesn't think your father cares about her. Of course he does. Well, of course he does. Deeply, too. <laughs> Dang fool won't tell her. You gonna talk to him? Yes, I'm gonna talk to him. Her, too. First thing in the morning. Well, I'm going to bed. Yeah. I think I'll join you.
are you doing up this hour? It ain't even light yet. I couldn't leave without seeing you. I had to wait till you were up. Leave? Why? I don't know. They're all too old. They don't understand anything. But you do. We can talk. You and I. Sure, Laurie, but... Please come with me. Neither of us will have to be alone anymore if you come with me. Laura, you're not alone. You've got your father. My father? My father, what does he care about me? He doesn't care at all. He won't let me do what I want. He won't even let me think what I want. It's like living in prison. Oh, Laura, you got no idea what prison's like. I knew you were going to say that. But that's what it's like, honestly. Please come with me. I can't come with you. I got a job in Virginia City. You had a job. Do you really think my father's going to let you keep it? Don't you remember how he treated you yesterday? Lori, I've been thinking about something your father said yesterday. About fear. And I reckon the trick is, you got to learn to stand up to that fear. Maybe next time. Next time? Well, maybe there won't be a next time, Lori. You know, all folks ain't like your father. Oh, but they are. All of them. They're all the same, even Uncle Ben. They're hypocrites. They'll never let you forget about your past because they can't forget about it. Rick, there can be a whole new world for us, for you and me. Oh, my father will miss me. Lori? You shut your bag. I can't let you go alone. Come on, I'll saddle the horse. That's all I got. I ain't no horse thief. stage is wondering what will happen when I catch up with him. I wonder, too. Daily journal to be given to my daughter, Laurie, in case of my death. She thinks the father doesn't care. We gotta find Laurie. She's I'll check the back room. All right.
I figured. Rick's horse is the only other one that's gone. Oh, maybe the riding double. That'll slow them up anyway. Yeah, I'll saddle the horses, huh? No, no. Just saddle mine. I want you here in case I miss Luke and the boys on the road. I'll get my things. All right. That boy, Ben. We well, found the grave, Pa, just like Rick said. And this, Billy's gun, his name scratched on the butt plate. When we get back to the Ponderosa, I'm going to have a little talk with that boy, Ben. Well, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to. He's not there. What do you mean, he's not there? He's gone, Luke. I can't say as I blame him. I was a little tough on him. I might as well get back to the ranch. Well, Laurie has gone, too. Sometime during the night, they both left. Uh, unless you've got the reward money with you, it's it's missing, too. You let that prison dirt take my daughter. Ben, if any harm comes to my child, how long have they been gone? At least a couple of hours. We hit this road about a mile back. If they're headed for Virginia City, they've already passed the junction. You fellas take the cross the city road. Come on. Why are we stopping? We're off to Ponderosa now. We got some talking to do. Frick, if my father gets. They could be after us right now. Well, it can't be helped, Lori. I mean, us running off into nowhere like this is just plain crazy. Now, my horse can't carry us both forever. We gotta make some plans. Maybe we can catch a stage or something. Fine. Where to? Well, Lori, I ain't got no money on me. What I got's in the bank, and that don't amount to much. I told you I've got money. A thousand dollars. Oh, Lori, you didn't take that from the Cartwrights, did you? Of course not. It's the reward money for Billy Miller, alive or dead. You were the one who knew, so. Here. As far as I know, there was no reward offered. Even if there was, your father or a court would have to hand it out. You've taken this money just the same as stealing it. Don't you see that? No, I don't. Well, you're the one said they'd never forget my past. I reckon this just about guarantees it. Well, who cares? We're going to change our names anyway. I'm taking it back, Lori. I'm taking you back, too. Running away trying to forget everything that ever happened just don't work. Oh, Lori. Sweet little Lori, why don't you grow up? You know, a man can't be just what he wants to be. He's what he's been, what he is, what he hopes to be. Everybody is. So are you. Come here, Laurie. You wouldn't shoot him, Father. Do as I say, while well, you can't move. The boy's not armed, Luke. Luke. Luke, did you hear me? 
What do you want me to do, Marshall? Just let her run off by herself? That's what she was gonna do, you know. That's what I'm still fixing to do. Here, the reward money. That's what you really came after, isn't it? No, Lori. I came after you. Oh, Father, stop it. And don't try to send Rick back to prison. I took it. He showed you where Billy Miller was. It belongs to him. Even so, he was going to return it. I don't understand, Lori. Why do you want to leave? No. You don't understand. You wouldn't have to ask why. What difference does it make? You don't care about me. You never have. Lori. You never had any time in your life for me. Ever. You always sending me away, keeping me away. It was all for you, Lori. Everything I did was for you. How could it have been for me? My own father ends up a stranger. He never even wrote me, except maybe once a year. I bet you never even thought about me. Tell her, look. Look, tell her. in your father's bedroom after you left. It's a, it's a daily journal which he wrote for you. To be given to my daughter, Lori, in case of my death. He wrote to you every day. Sometimes a word, sometimes a, a whole page. He thought of you all the time. Why in a journal? Why didn't you put it in a letter? Life hasn't always been pretty for me, Laurie. Sometimes, no, most times, the things I put down weren't seemly for a little girl to read. I'm not a little girl anymore. Yes, I know that now. I should have written all along. I should have, but I guess it's a little late to start that now. I read it now. Well, sure, if you want to. It's yours to keep. How well, should we get back to the Ponderosa? If we can find those horses you spooked, Luke. East, they figure California is the place for the future. When I heard that, I thought we ought to look around out there before settling someplace else. That makes sense, doesn't it, Ben? If Laurie says so. Evening, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hello, Rick. Marshal. Ben here's been telling me that you have hopes of taking over the Smithy one of these days. Well, I hope to, sir. One of these days. Maybe when I get a little something put aside. I deposit a thousand dollars to your account this afternoon. Maybe it'll help. Like Laurie says, it does belong to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, what I came to ask about... Well, I'd like your permission to dance with Laurie, sir. Well, I'd say that'd be up to her. If she wants to, I have no objection. Thank you.
Well, that didn't hurt too much, did it? No, but it takes some getting used to. How about some more punch? How about something a little stronger? I'm with you. Mouth shut, Terrell. Because Coley Claiborne's back in town. Now he sees all that gold you got in them teeth. Why, well, he and his pa just might stake out a claim on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Melton? Mr. Melton? Ah, oh, it's you, huh? My pa said if I ever need anything, I was supposed to come see you. Yeah. Coley! I'm a businessman. My equipment is for sale, not for a loan. And I'm well aware that your paw is my cousin. It ain't that kind of hell. Cully, you're about big enough to do a man's work. If you want a job, if you want a chance to earn some money, I'll do what I can for you. But, uh... All right, just forget it. Well, where are you running off to? Listen, you tell your pa for me, there comes a time in every man's life when he gives up chasing rainbows and pays his bills. And when he does that, then we'll talk. Now, you just tell him that for me. You just tell him that. Ah. Yeah, what you have? Uh, flour and salt. Yeah, real good, real good, huh? Yeah, you got it almost loaded. We? What is this we? How come, how come I always do the toting and you end up doing the checking? Well, I got the pencil and paper. And salt. Hey, Coley, how you doing? I didn't know you took up reading for the law. I went to see Judge Butler, but he's not there. Is uh, your pa in town? No, no, he's up in Sacramento. Anything I can do for you? No. Coley. expecting to pay for those things. Reckon I'll be needing some ammunition for the Springfield, a couple of new picks, and a shovel. Holly, if you're hungry, take the bacon, the beans. But I already told you, Pa, there's no more credit. Makes no difference does he send you or come himself. Come on, Claude, why don't you just put on his Pa's bill? You run this place on credit. Joe Lynn Claiborne's in to me for 140 bucks. Now, because he ain't got the guts to come down and face me, he sends a kid. That ain't true. It ain't, eh? Then where is he? Why didn't he come down instead of you? Because he's dead, that's why. Because he's dead. <laughs> Charlie, you seen Coley Claiborne? Yeah, he's in the stable. He slept there last night. Good, thank you. Coley? Hey, Coley. Wake up. Ah. Joe came home last night and told me you were in town by yourself. Ain't nothing you should trouble over. Hey, Charlie, let me use that towel, will you? You bet. Coley, little Joe tells me that, that your pa's dead. He told it right. How'd it happen? 
Shelf caved in on top of him. I'm sorry. Don't be. It was quick, like he'd have wanted. Too late for him to know, so uh, there's nothing to be sorry about. Where did this happen? Up on Purgatory Ridge, where I buried him three days ago. Coley, did your Paul ever mention to you the fact that he'd made some arrangements in case something like this did happen? If you're talking about Caleb and the judge and your paw, yeah, he said something about it. Well, you see, your paw's will made them the executors. And that means that, that my paw has something to do with looking out after you. Now, until he gets back to town, that's my job. From now on, I'm gonna be looking out for myself. And there's something I gotta take care of right now. Mr. Thompson? Yesterday, you said I couldn't have no credit because my pa owed you $140. I said you could have the beans. Well, now, you tell me if there ain't enough dust there to buy more than beans. Hoss, look. This ain't dust. This is real glory gold. Come on. Just come off your paws, Glenn. Old shelf of it. Holy. Yesterday, you didn't tell me you could pay. Well, you didn't give me a chance. You were in such an all-fired hurry to say no. Hang on, hang on. Coley, you still can't pay. This ain't yours yet, neither is that claim. It's a part of your paws' estate. I think you better come on out and spend the next few days with me at the Ponderosa. What for? Just so your pa can get his grab ahead of the others? Nope. So that we can make sure that you get exactly what your pa wanted you to have. Do you know what'll happen when this town hears about this strike? The only claim on Purgatory Ridge worth a dime was the one that me and pa staked. All the rest of the claims on that ridge were dug up and forgot about years ago. That's right. And you're gonna have to have guns to protect it. Just like your pa wanted my pa to protect you. Yeah. And he's got Caleb Melton protecting him. And Melton's got the judge protecting him. Funny. Pa said with three executors watching each other, I might just get what's right in mind. Come on, Billy. Really. Son? I don't like to think of you sleeping in a stable with this on your person. Better in some places, I know. Why'd you run off, anyway? I looked all over for you. Oh, you did? Well, Hoss didn't have any trouble finding me, and he just got here this morning. And he'd been looking for me before he knew about the mine. So, uh, that puts him ahead of you others. Judge, I suggested to Cola that he spend the next few days out to Ponderosa. Oh, no, just a minute. What rights have you got in this? My Paul left me his power of attorney, and I'm acting on his behalf till he gets back. It's perfectly legal. That's a pretty good idea, considering what this town is going to be like after they hear what's in the assay report. Aren't you forgetting I'm the boy's only blood kin, if he's going to stay with anyone? Hey, Coley, you mind leaving us alone for a minute, huh? All right. Run away. Run away. Run away. Judge, I'd like to hear what you think. Now, this thing kind of caught me with one foot in the stirrup, as it were. I, uh, I got business over in Fallon. Now, when's Ben coming back? About a week. Ah, works out good. I'll be back by then. I'll shoot, take care of the boy until us three duly appointed executors can sit down and decide what to do. I got a feeling that's not going to be so easy. That boy's got a real hard head. Plain cussed stubborn like his paw, if you ask me. Well, what else can you expect? He spent the last four years with him. Yeah. It's been rough on him ever since his mall left. And speaking of his mall, I think this is something we ought to discuss with her. Oh, now, wait a minute, Hoss. You're not going to bring her into this. Well, come on now. Everyone knows Margaret Claiborne just up and ran off from Coley and his paw four years ago. That's a plain case of desertion. The way I remember it, she took a daughter and a baby boy with her. Now, that ain't desertion. Glenn's will don't mention anyone but Coley. 
We and Will don't mention a gold strike neither, Judge. Now, I, I, for one, think it's something we ought to discuss with her before we make any decisions about Coley. Maybe you'd like to discuss it with that drummer she ran off with, too. Now, that's got nothing to do with it. She's still his mother, and I think we ought to try and get in touch with her. I'll notify all the major newspapers, run a legal notice on Len's death. <laughs> so what do we do, just sit around here and wait on this woman? Who hasn't seen fit to contact her own son in four years? And let a $2 million claim lie fallow? There's more to be considered than just money, Caleb. We've got to think about Coley and what's going to happen to him. I don't know. What's this all about? Well, well the boy uh, claims his pa struck it rich before he died. He's got a lot of people stirred up. Yeah, and we just thought we'd clear it all up. And mining town is short on work. Ain't no place to be salt and rumors. This here boy's lying. Now, you just listen here, you old claim jumper. I ain't lying. Well, you, you asked them. They saw the assay report. Coley, I told you to keep your mouth shut about this. Well, just how long do you think you're going to keep a thing like that quiet, Hoss? Till the estate's settled and the claim can be assigned to a company. I don't see where that ought to take forever. Everybody knew it was just Coley and his pa. Well, the boy's got a ma, too, and it seems she's going to have something to say about it. You might get claim on? <laughs> well, she ain't fit enough to use these city streets, much less tell this boy nothing. Hey, shut up. I'm sorry, son. Coley, you ready? Yeah. We're gonna have to get some guards out on that claim. I'll get them out there by this afternoon. Fine. Come on, Coley. Hoss, the minute I get a reply, I'll contact you. All right. Any of you men want to earn a dollar a day and found as claim guards, get down at the sheriff's office in about 20 minutes and be deputized. Well, I'm not working for those Not me. I'll find out about that claim. Yeah, that's all I want to do. I'll tell you what we're doing. I'll tell you what we're doing. I'll tell you what we're doing. I'll tell you what we're I guess you can't blame those fellas for being a little disappointed. First, it was a gold rush in the making. Now it's less than miners' wages. Well, we only need 10 guard. They'll be there. I suppose. That's because they don't think like we think, do they, Caleb? The Southern Central Mining could be very grateful to anybody who would help us secure that claim. Just what are you driving at? Well, that used equipment we let you have, Caleb. We could forget you ain't paid for it yet. <laughs> you tell that company they can pick up this worn-out junk anytime they want. Now, you'll uh, pardon me? When I say grateful, Caleb, I mean real grateful. Oh, I'd look if I were you. What, uh, what do I have to do? Just deliver, that's all. What'd you say? My pa said, when a man offers too much, find out his price. Well, right now, I'd settle for a little less sass, a little more respect. That why you brace take Bradley? I know what my ma was, Hoss. My pa told me right enough. I just want to hear her side of the story, and you should too. That day, when Pa and me came home, that cabin was so quiet you could hear your own breathing. Little Billy, Beth, her, everybody gone. 
never will forget Pa standing there with her note in his hand. Like something broke inside. Did you read it? Didn't have to. The meaning was plain enough. You know, Coley, sometimes folks have reasons for doing things. First year, I, I prayed to hear one. I, I'd have listened. That was three years ago. It's too late to start wishing all over again. But it's never too late to listen. You're wrong. It's too late for Pa. So it's too late for me. like half the town turned out to meet her. Well, let's get on over there. Thank you. Uh, those three up there are mine. Sure ain't the Maggie Claiborne I remember. Well, that's at San Francisco living. the paper sooner. Where's my boy? He's out at the Ponderosa. We thought that's the best thing to do until we cleared up a few things. I didn't come here to clear up anything. I just came to get my son. See, ma'am, that legal notice you read in the paper don't mean that you can just come and take the boy. The fact is, Coley doesn't even want to see you. I expected that. His father had him for four years. But I'm his mother. Let me have him for a few months, then he can decide for himself. Well, ma'am, it, it ain't altogether that easy. You see, there's more to be considered than just who's going to be the legal guardian. You mean the two million dollars? You heard about land strike? Of course, that was in the papers too. And men from the mining companies came to see me. Yeah, well, you don't have anything to do with the mine. You aren't mentioned in Lynn's will. I don't care about the mine or the money, just Coley. Well, you can say that, but who's gonna believe it? I'll swear to it in court and I'll sign any papers you want. This won't be a matter that comes to court. Ma'am, the three executors will decide who the guardian's gonna be. That's what we want to talk to you about. Who else would he go with but me? Well, Margaret, you'll have to admit the boy's been a lot closer to me than he has to you these past four years. And I am Lynn's blood kin. But we're Coley's kin. He belongs with us. Honey, there ain't nobody going to make any decisions about Coley until my pa and the judge get back, and that's it. House, I want to see him. Well, ma'am, I can't promise he'll talk to you. I think he will. He's my only son. What about the uh, younger one? Johnny, wasn't it? His name was Billy, Mr. Milton. He's dead. Over three years now. Beth, we don't burden others with our troubles. I'll wait for Coley at the hotel. Come back. Ma'am, I'll take care of your baggage. No, thank you. We'll, we'll manage by ourselves.
It's usually used for shortening rope. See how easy it comes loose? It's called a sheep shank. Although that's not a proper name for a cattleman to use. Here, come on. Try it. You can do it. Uh, I don't know if I'd be much of a cattleman. I, I think I'd just soon stick to prospecting. Seems to me prospecting's for, for those who ain't struck it rich yet. Not with Pa and me. We was going to keep on going. Just the two of us. Depending on nobody. Hmm. But it seems while you two were busy depending on nobody, you uh, sure were dependent an awful lot on each other. Us? You're just in time to help me convince Coley to become a cattleman. Uh, Gunner. I've got something else I need to talk to, to Coley about. Coley, your ma's in town. You know how I feel about her, Haas. As far as I'm concerned, she's just as dead as Pa is. She, uh, she didn't come along. You mean, uh, Beth and... Billy, too? Well, not Billy, but, but Beth. And she's anxious to talk to you. I can't hardly remember what she looks like. Except she's homely. <laughs> All right. I'll go with you to see Beth and nobody else. Tom thinks I want to see my son. Well, it, you see, it, it ain't altogether that easy. Mother, I think Mr. Cartwright's trying to help. Then why didn't you bring Coley here? I did. But, you see, he... Well, he don't want to talk to nobody but Beth. Mother? Talk to him, please. All right. Where is he? He's just across the hall. He's waiting for you. Beth, tell him for me. Is that you? Oh, come in. All the way from San Francisco, I've been thinking of what I'd say when I saw you. Now, all of a sudden, I... I don't know. Boy, if I... I've seen you on the street, I... I don't think I'd have recognized you. Oh. Um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You didn't. It's just that... you look so... old. 
Well, I... I, uh, guess you, uh... Guess you know about Pa. I tried to cry when Mom told me. But I couldn't remember him except for his beard. What happened to Billy? Well, the... The doctor in Placerville called it lung fever. That winter, when you and Papa didn't come back... We came back. As soon as it thawed. We waited till April. Mama worked in the laundry in Placerville till summer. After that, we went to Sacramento and San Francisco. I ain't holding it against you, Beth. I mean, there wasn't much choice, not then. But things are a little different now. You don't have to stay with her anymore. You don't mean that. There's money. Enough for the both of us the rest of our lives. Now, Pa'd want that. But you're forgetting about Mama. She loves you, Coley. That's the only reason she's here. And that's a lie. Glenn's responsible for the way Coley feels, but why should the whole town hate me? I reckon that you were just something a little grander than they were expecting, ma'am. What do you mean? I mean, like the clothes you're wearing. And... I made these clothes myself. It's the way I earn my living, dressmaking. Well, I, I reckon I was thinking of Lynn and all those years and the hardships. When did they start feeling sorry for him? The way I remember it, they all turned their backs on him long ago. Afraid he tried to borrow more money. Yeah. Well, that changed when he found all that gold. And people tend to forget a man's faults after he's dead. Pity they're not so considerate of the living. Yeah. It's just human nature, I reckon. And I ran away and left Coley and his father. Is that what they're saying? Yes, I'm pretty much. And you? All of you? You think that's all there was to it? Coley! You gotta tell him. He thinks we love because we didn't love him. It's all right, Beth. It's all right, son. Don't call me that. Now, you just listen. No matter what promises you make up or what lies you tell, it ain't gonna make no difference. Coley. Steal your mother, Coley. And it's nothing I'm proud of. You should have thought of that before you came back. Guess I didn't know what I was coming back to. And don't try and turn me against Paul with your lies. Like you've done with Beth. Coley, that isn't true. It is true. And I gave you a chance to come with me. What? I said I gave her a chance to come with me. You had no right to do that. Just as much right as you have coming here stirring everything up. One thing your father didn't teach you, respect for others. Oh, yeah, he did. For them that deserves it. Virginia City that knows what your pa's intentions were better than you. Now, you take a man like Hoss, see, he, he thinks he just can't make a mistake. Like about your mother. You mean he's the one who wanted her here? Yeah. Now, you and me, we, we understand each other, don't we? Yeah, I reckon we understand each other. All right. Now, I'm not denying for a minute that it would be a real feather in my cap if I were to wind up managing your holding. But you just think what it would be like for you if anyone else ended up your guardian. Say, your ma. You seen Coley Clayman? Oh, uh, yeah. Hoss is uh, right out there on the front porch with Caleb Milton. Hoss, I'm just uh, telling the boy here he's got some deciding to do. Yeah, I'm sure. Coley, you about ready? It's time we were getting back. Mr. Melton, I'll uh, 
I'll think about it. Good night, boy. You, uh, you do what I say now. Caleb, I don't want that boy fretted. Hoss, it wasn't me who wanted to bring that woman back here. She came back here so the boy could make his own choice. Now, it's going to be rough enough for him without everybody pulling at him from every side. What do you want me to do, just give her a free hand? Nope. I'm asking you to let that boy make up his own mind. Well, Hoss, I think he already has. And I think Judge Butler's going to see it the same way. mother should be here. She should know what's going on. Well, I'm glad you agree. Melton doesn't. <laughs> How come? Oh, I reckon he wants to be the guardian or something other. Oh. Does he want to be the guardian of the mine, too? What about the Judge Butler? What does he think? Well, the judge has been out of town, and there ain't no way of knowing what he thinks. Well, what do you think? Well, Paul, I just can't figure a lady like Mrs. Claiborne leaving one young'un and Raising another one as nice as Beth. Well, would you make a decision based on that? I don't know. But I ain't got to make that decision now, have I? I'm glad you're on, boy. Do you think he'll ever talk to us? You were supposed to be asleep. I can't sleep, Mama. Knowing how Coley feels. Maybe if I'd been a little nicer... No, darling, you were fine. Your brother's got his mind made up. I don't think we can change it. Not ever? I don't know. But we still love him. Sometimes just loving isn't enough. You have to prove it. Is Buggy all right, Mrs. Claiborne? Fine, thank you. See you when you get back. Miss Claiborne! Miss Claiborne! Get out of my way, all of you. Not till I tell you. Now, there's a lot of folks in this town don't have any use for your kind around here. And as soon as you start moving, you just keep right on moving, and don't you ever come back. I don't care what you want. Now, stand aside. Whoa. Now, Len Claiborne had a lot of friends in this town. Good friends. Now, we don't want you coming back here and grabbing that money and laying another stain on Len's grave. I don't recall you as such good friends of Len's, and I don't care what you think of me. Now, get your hands off my horse. Leave the lady alone.
turn loose those lines. Mm. Ain't no cause for you two to come button in here. I said turn loose those lines. Here's your luggage. Did you ask him to bring the bags out here? No, I didn't. Take the bags back in the hotel. Get out of here. All of you. Go on, get out of here. Sorry about that, ma'am. Thank you. I don't think they'll bother you again. I'll put your bags back in the hotel. No, please. Uh, they saved us the trouble of packing. <sighs> ma'am, there ain't no need in your going. As a matter of fact, Paul would like to come out to Ponderosa. He's planning on having a meeting with all the executors. Well, that's where we're going, but just to say goodbye to Coley. No meetings. Joe, won't you ride on out with him, and I'll take care of everything here in town. Right. Coley, before you say anything, I invited your mother and sister here. It's your house. Yeah, that's right. But you know, the world would sure be a whole lot better off if people could only learn to listen to others, even though they don't care for them too much. Just listen. So why don't you do that? If you say so, I'll, I'll listen. You see, I've already made up my mind. I, uh, I know who I want to take care of me. We'll discuss that later. We just came to say goodbye, Cooley, that's all. Why don't I leave you folks alone? If I hurt you by coming here, Cooley, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. Why'd you even come? I didn't ask for you. Maybe we came because we love you. Did you ever think of that? You maybe, but uh, not her. How do you know unless you give her a chance to show you? I'm giving her the same chance as she gave Pa and me. Say goodbye, Beth. It's time for us to go. You're mean, Coley. You're dirty mean. Now, it wasn't me or Pa that made it like that. I guess none of us had a choice. Please, all I want to do is leave. You do that, ma'am, and we'll just have to follow you to San Francisco. Now, there's some talking has to be done. It might as well be done right here and now. Say, you're a pretty little lady. Why don't you go out there and join Hoss and have him show you the ranch? Coley? You haven't let anyone change your mind, have you? Didn't budge me none. I'll stick with you. That's what I told you, Judge. Now, this is bound to hurt some, so we'll get it over as quick as possible. There's some things going to be said that are not for your ears, young fella, so we'll thank you to leave. If you're going to be talking about what's going to happen to me, I got a right to listen. Oh, sass on your elders, huh? Well, you don't look too big to spank. What do you think, Ben? Uh, Coley, why don't you go upstairs, as the judge asked? We'll call you. If I've learned anything in 20 years on the bench, it's that people change their minds. What they say one day, 
They don't see the next. Now, Coley, he might change his mind. And that's one of the reasons that we wanted you here. There are others, but uh, that'll do for the moment. Now, this isn't a court of law, but what we say here and decide had better hold up in one. So well, that's why Len named you as one of the executors. It's a matter of custody first. We can talk about the mine and the money later. Is there anything you'd uh, care to say? Coley's decided what he wants. Well, what he wants is not too important right now. It's what's best for him that we have to decide. Well, it's pretty obvious that she is not what's best for him. I'm just making some opening remarks. You'd be polite to shut up and listen. Now, in a court of law, there's only one reason to take a boy away from his mother. That's if she's not fit to be his mother. Now, it's only fair to tell you there's some talk that you are not. What do you think? I said it was talk. I didn't say we believed it. Margaret, um, there are always two sides to every story. And I, I think the judge was trying to say he'd like to hear your side. You separated from your husband? That might be a good place to start. She ran off and left him. Yes, I left him. And your son. And my son. You just packed up and left with a fancy drummer. With a drummer, yes. I wouldn't hardly call Abner Coles fancy. He's a nice, fat old man with five children of his own and a wife. He was kind enough to give me and Beth and Billy a ride to Placerville. Abner's not only fat, he's as homely as four miles a bad road. Why did you... Why did you go off with him? There was no food in the house and no money. Billy was sick. Len was gone. He was too busy looking for gold to worry about whether we ate or had medicine or had clothes on our backs. The fact is that you didn't have to go. Any of Len's friends would have helped you out. You could have come to me. Could I? Len asked you to grub stake him. Lots of times you turned him down. And his friends, they ran when they saw him coming. They were so sure he'd ask for money. I'll agree to that. It uh, occurred to me that Len's memory has suddenly taken on a considerable amount of shine since folks learned that he'd found a gold mine. The mine is what brought her back here. I don't care what she says. She's after the money. That's a lie. Well, then why did you stay away for four years? If you were so interested in your son, why didn't you come back a long time ago? Come back where? Len and Coley were in Virginia City. I could have walked over all the mountains in Nevada and never found them. Well, you could have written. I did write, not just once, at least a dozen times. I wrote and told him where we were in Placerville. I wrote him when Billy died. I never got an answer. I don't believe that. I wrote him from San Francisco. I told him what I was doing. I told him how he could reach us. I told him how much Beth needed him. I told him to bring Coley and come to San Francisco. Or to send for me and Beth so we could be a family again. And I never heard a word. Let's gentle it down. Shouting at one another is not going to settle anything. Now let everybody sit down, and we'll start from the beginning. Nice and reasonable. Sit down, Margaret. You too, Caleb. Go on over there and sit down. Now, you used to see Len from time to time. Did he ever mention that he'd heard from his wife? No. He said the last he ever heard was the note she left when she ran out on him. I'm going to turn to you. Mr. Cartwright, I, I got something to show you. Did you find these? In my pa's stuff. These are letters that your mother wrote to your father from Placerville, from San Francisco. Why didn't you tell me you had them? I didn't know what they were. What? I don't know how to read. to Mr. Melton twice asking where Len was. He never answered me either. I never got a letter from her in my life. There's not a word of truth in that woman. She's lying. She's lying. 
She's lying! Now, you wait a minute. You're the one that's lying. You said that she didn't send any letters to my pawn. She did. Oh, and I bet you she wrote you, too. Now, don't let me get to you. She's lying. You're the one that's been lying this whole no, time. Don't tell me my mom's lying. lying. Just, wait a minute. Trying my to get mom's to you. lying. Don't let me get to you, I son. Did my Remember mom's what you said to me? We're gonna... Hey, stop it! That's it. That's it. All right, stop it. Take your hands off me. You poisoned his mind against me. Mrs. Claiborne said she wrote her husband, and she did. She said she wrote you, too. Did she? Well, did she? I think you've got your answer, Judge. I think so, too. Caleb! If you're planning a court trial for the boy, don't! You may have to explain why Pollard's been telling folks that he's got you and the mine in his back pocket. Sorry. <laughs> Caleb left here under a pretty good head of steam, so it looks like there's just you two executors left. Well, that's enough to decide what to do, as long as they can agree. You any suggestions? No. Well, families together, it's, it's the important thing. I, uh, I have one suggestion. Yeah, I think I know. Let's have some of that brandy. <laughs> <laughs> 